everybody, it's Mike Drudge coming to you from Vaud RV. Right behind me, I have a 2023 Jayfeather 22BH. It's a bunkhouse model. This guy's right at 29 feet long, about 7,500 pounds fully loaded, so it's half ton towable. There's so much cool stuff to check out on the outside, but before we do that, let's hop on the inside and have a look. Come on. All right, guys, come on in here and check this out. There's a lot going on in here and a lot that I like about this new model. Starting with, you'll notice right away, there's a huge window right here on the patio side. What you know, I refer to as the fun side of the coach, all right? That's where the fire pit, the picnic table, all the activity is happening out there. Now, oftentimes your kitchen is right here and there's cabinets and there's a sink and everything. You just can't see out there. But here we've got this beautiful picture window. I can open this up for air. I can see what's going on out there. I can see the kids playing and everything. I really like that about this floor plan. We've kind of flipped the script and moved the galley over here when it's typically on this side with a lot of flights and feathers. So the galley, the whole kitchen area is in a slide. Now, because it is in a slide, it takes up a little bit of cabinet space, but not a lot. It's still a pretty spacious galley for a sub 30 foot trailer. So I like that. What else is cool about this? We have double bunks, so double up, double down. So 600 pounds up, 600 pounds down. And this is cool. Check this out. This is like a timeout area for your kids or your pet or storing things. But say you have a bike or something you want to store. All you have to do is flip this up like this, latch this up on top. And now we have this great extra storage space and there's a door back there. So if I've got bikes, or say a kayak or something that's long, I can open up that door, which I'll do in a minute, and have access to the storage area under here. Really cool. Now, if you've been shopping Jayco's or really any brand of bunkhouse, you know that sometimes it's a little challenging to get into that top bunk up here. Jayco, to their credit, came up with this great ladder design. Boom. I have a ladder, how cool is that? So you don't have to look around for a ladder under here, go find a ladder from under the bed. I have a ladder, boom, right there, and it locks in place. It's out of the way when you don't need it. When you do, right there it is. I really like that. So let's look a little bit closer. So now I have my double bunks, I can sleep two, I can sleep two. Say you got the cousins visiting, you need more sleeping space yet. I can drop this dinette into an additional sleeping space, which is pretty much always the case. If you're wondering how to do that, we did a separate video on converting dinettes to a sleeping surface. Go check it out. And we pretty much covered every scenario there. I won't bore you with that, but this does make a sleeping space. Now on this unit, we're in what Jayco calls the modern farmhouse decor. Personally, my favorite, and it's proven to be one of the most popular uh, decors that Jayco offers. So we have matching inserts on the refrigerator here. And as always, Jayco's famous for their cabinet building quality, glued and screwed cabinets instead of staples, smoked glass inserts, full extension drawer glides, ball bearing drawer glides with 75 pound weight rating. Jayco just does a great job of that. I always ask, where's the trash can go? Having owned a bunch of RVs and a lot of RVs I've had, didn't have any place for the trash can. You got a place for the trash can under there. I love it. All right, pretty important. Gotta have a place for the trash can. I guess you could put one right there too. Now we can pop this up for extra prep space when you need it, pop it down when you don't. Now, how about TV uh, viewing area and entertainment in general? Here's Entertainment Central. We have an Insignia brand smart TV. So in 2023, Jayco's moved to smart TVs uh, throughout the coaches. So we have an Insignia, which is a Best Buy brand TV. I like them because they're easy to mirror content from your phone, among other things. So we have a TV here and then our stereo here. Now you see this little Bluetooth button right here. Pop that on if you want to stream music from your phone through the speakers inside here. Once you pair it up, you can play your Sirius XM. If you got Sirius XM on your phone, you can do that. Boom, just like that. Now you notice there's different zones here. 
zone one and zone two. Zone one is inside these speakers, zone two is out on the patio. So if you want to push some music out on the patio, you can do that. While we're talking about electronics, see this little guy back here? This is a tower of power, as we like to say. So household current, USB-C and regular USB. Here's the neat thing, pop this down and it's also a wireless charger if your phone does that. Lay it right on there and you can see it's charging automatically. So when you come in from that height, just lay your phone up there and you don't have to be fumbling around for cords. Now, I have a three burner cooktop, easy to remove this grate for cleaning, backlit controls, modest sized little oven, and again, additional storage under there. Check this out, man. These are really cool. So it's a narrow, narrow little drawer space, but these all pull out for easy access for utensils and so on. Again, ball bearing drawer glides, really, really nice. I like that a lot. Now we have a stainless range hood here with venting and lighting. So just like home, you can vent those smells, tempt your neighbors with that fraying bacon smell. And then on top, we have a modest size uh, microwave here. Not huge, but big enough for leftovers and stuff like that. Now the refrigerator is a 12 volt refrigerator. The industry is gravitating toward all 12 volt refrigerators. I've been a fan of these for a long time, mostly because they're bigger and they behave like a residential refrigerator. This is a compressor refrigerator as opposed to a gas absorption, which has been the industry standard for a long, long time. But most notably, it's just bigger. It's a bigger refrigerator. You turn this on and you're freezing your ice cream in a couple hours. A gas absorption fridge, on the other hand, you really need to turn it on the night before you leave before it gets down cold enough to freeze everything. And then if you're opening and closing the door a lot, sometimes they struggle to keep up. All that to say, I like these a lot. Now, again, it's important if you don't have hookups to make sure you have a good battery power to keep this guy running because it's running exclusively on 12 volts. And I'll talk about that in just a second. We have a little pantry storage basically on the side of the fridge, nice deep pantry storage. It goes all the way to the outside wall. So great for boxes of cereal and dry goods and, and stuff like that. So right here is our solar charge controller. This is trying to charge a battery that doesn't exist, so it's a little bit grumpy right now. But we have 200 watts of solar optioned on this unit, so that's constantly sending basically a trickle charge to your batteries if you're out where you don't have shore power. So this is a great place to monitor your charge status of your batteries and how much charge they're receiving from the solar up on the rooftop. If you've watched any of my videos at all, you already know that this is, of course, a grenade launcher for security. Not really. This is called a thermistor. It's sampling the air temperature, sending that information up here to keep you comfortable. And you'll see these at different points of the coaches. Usually there's one in each room of a Jayco trailer, sampling the air, sending that information back to the brains of the coach. So let's check out our additional storage on this side. We have a pantry or it's really whatever you want it to be. This shelf comes out of here completely. So if you have tall items, you can put those tall items in here. Really handy. Down here's our converter with our breakers and our fuses. They're all labeled on here so you can easily see what they're for. Really handy to have that um, and labeled nicely. I always like it when stuff's labeled nicely because you buy a new RV or a different RV, you're not familiar. I'm one of those guys, the last thing I want to do is resort to the owner's man. <laughs> Right, so when it's labeled on there, that's especially handy. I already mentioned these bunks, 600 pounds up and down. There's individual lighting on each one. We've got an air duct up here to keep you cool. Now this is important. A lot of times when you shop around, and you should, see how thick the mattress is. We've got four inch foam mattress up here. So this is comfortable. Adults can sleep on this. Plywood base on the bunks. All the bed surfaces are plywood instead of particle board or OSB. Jayco's a, a plywood based builder. So there's plywood under our feet here. There's plywood up in the roof structure, which is a 4,500 pound weight rating. And there's plywood under the bed decks. It's more expensive. You know, you look at a trailer and you think, well, they all look the same. They just have different decals. 
once you start peeling back the layers of the onion, you realize that they're not all created the same. It's why Jayco's cost a few more bucks and weigh a few more pounds than the competition. But when I'm dragging this thing down the road, and it's being subjected to hurricane force, winds, and earthquake level vibrations, I want it to hold together. And so those little details go a long way with me. All right, let's check out the bathroom, which is pretty spacious. Again, we're in a sub 30 foot trailer, so not a huge bathroom, but plenty room enough, plenty of elbow room here. Foot flush toilet, basin sink here in the corner. I've got a medicine cabinet up here and then a pretty spacious shower with a single piece surround. So I'm six feet tall. Just to give you an idea of context, um, I need the skylight up here, which gives you some more height. So if you're say six, four, six, five, you can still get in here. You're still gonna have to duck with this, but this is a one piece shower surround. Now, a lot of people will notice down on the bottom and say, gosh, isn't that gonna leak? So what's happening here, there's a lip that goes up from this shower pan up here. This is designed to flex because of temperature changes and so on. Not gonna leak. This is one piece surround around here. Here's another notable thing about Jayco. I'm standing on a plywood base underneath this shower pan. I weigh 200 pounds, I'm jumping up and down. If this wasn't reinforced, I might fall through or worse yet, create a leak in the plumbing fittings down there. It could leak for weeks or months before you would even know it. If you're curious how these are put together, we did a full video on the tour of a Jayco plant. Might be interesting for you. So, um, moving on from the back of the coach, I already talked about our dinette here. We've got a slide out which opens this up nicely. Now, before I go up into the bedroom, I wanna talk about stepping up into the coach. This is one feature on this floor plan I really like. It's this, so when it's time to go out, you're gonna put your shoes on or whatever, you can sit down here and do that. Plus there's a little cubby under here. My pet peeve is stepping up into a trailer, you're stepping over shoes and flip flops and dog leashes and everything. It's so easy to toss them under there. Plus you have storage under here. So uh, the dog leash, the dog collar, the dog treats, the toys, shoes, flip flops, you can get them out of the way. You can hang your hat or your jacket right here, put your hat or whatever up here. This, this area is gonna get a lot of use in our, if I have this unit. I really like this feature here. It's really, really handy. Now going up into the bedroom, there's no slide up here. So we have a north-south oriented bed, um, as is the case in just about all cases with Jayco trailers. We have gas struts on the bed base. So this will keep this bed platform up while I access items under here. Again, notice it's plywood. It's not particle board. That's very significant. When you're shopping around, and I encourage you to, lift up the mattress and see what you see. Bet you don't always see plywood. Now here's a cool thing. If you look down at the bottom here, you can see plywood on the bottom here. And the reason there's plywood down there is to create space to put drawers. So on either side of this, I have drawers and I can still load this up with gear and extra blankets and linens and still have a drawer under here. And I can lift up this plywood and access that space down below if I need to. So that's handy. Now, a possible negative on this, this is what we call an RV queen. It's not a queen queen, a residential queen. That means it's a little bit shorter and a tad bit narrower than a residential size queen. So, best way for me to show you is to show you. I am six feet tall, exactly. So with my head right here, you can see where my feet are. Would I sleep in this? Would I camp in this? Of course I would, it's not bad at all. Could you put a residential queen in here? Probably can. Thing is, is the, you're, you're gonna come out to about here and it's gonna be a real tight squeeze to get around here and shuffle around. You can do it, but I just like to point that out that this is an RV queen. Now on either side of the bed, you have closet rod and a shelf on either side, it's the same. We do have storage up top with smoke glass inserts 
And then on either side of the bed, there's USB charging ports and there's also household current. And finally a little switch right here, which turns on and off this blue nightlight. So if I turn this off, you can see a little better. There's a blue nightlight back there. Just enough light to find your way around for that late night bathroom run. So I always like to point out the, uh, the warts along with all the good stuff. Um, no trailer, no RV is perfect. So there's always a sacrifice when you do one aspect or one feature. And one thing I'm not crazy about this is the bed's not huge but it's big enough. The mattress is quality though, I like it. It's a foam mattress, Serta brand. Thumbs up on that. I would like for there to be gas struts up here to hold this up instead of it just goes, there's nothing to hold it up while I'm trying to fish around and get stuff out of there. You could add those, it wouldn't be major surgery to do that, but um, I'm no good if I'm not honest with you. So let me go over here and point out a couple things before I leave the bedroom area. Now these lights, you can turn them on by pushing them on right here in the middle and they're also switched. There's one over there, same way here. These are basically reading lights for nighttime. You can just reach up there and turn those on and off. If you want to add a television, right here's where it goes. So this area is reinforced to put a TV mounting bracket. It's real solid there. Household current and your coax cable connection. So you can put a TV up here if you want. Um, I'm remiss in telling you that this is Asdell inside and out. So it's Asdell fiberglass exterior and interior both on the J Feather line. And also through the J Feather line now, you have these roller shades throughout. Uh, used to be you'd get pleated shades pleated shades on a lot of units in this price point. These are all blackout roller shades. And check this out, it's a reflective surface on the outside, so it helps keep it cool in here when this is deployed. And uh, so besides darkening, helps keep it cool on the inside. I like that. Now when it's time to travel, you wanna make sure that this is secured up here. You grab a hold of this to loosen it, now we can close off for total privacy like so. But when you're traveling, you wanna make sure that you pull this like that. I'm a big fan of checklists and we've done a lot of checklists, uh, RV quick tips with Mike and RV quick lists with Mike, where you have a checklist, a pre-travel checklist, make your own, we can help you. We've got templates, but have a checklist and this should be on it. If you don't do that, this thing's slamming open and closed going down the road. Something else, have a checklist to make sure this door is latched completely. Also have a checklist if you have a glass shower door that it's all the way closed and secured. Otherwise that thing's going bang, 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 going down the road. All important things to preserve your investment. Now, before we go outside, I'll point out right up here, this is kind of command central, which is often right inside the door on these towables. Speaking of command, this is the J command control panel. Here's the cool thing, if I touch this, it lights up. We can check our tank levels here. And as I go through the menu, we've got our water pump, electric or gas water heater. We've got our motors, so our awning motor up here and our slide motor, and I just select it by hitting select and then ex extend and retract. Go to the next one, this is our AC, main AC, and of course it's off right now, it's set to 70 degrees and it's 74 degrees in here. It's not running. Now here's the cool, cool thing, I can pair my device. So I take my phone out of my pocket, put this in pair, I can link up my phone to this and do everything that this does from this. Why is that so cool? So if I'm at a campsite and park next to a giant pine tree, I can push the slide out with this and be watching that slide come out and make sure I'm not hitting the tree or boulder or whatever. So all these functions on here I can do from here, including the lighting. You have lighting shortcuts down here too, so I can hit all the lights right there. Really a, really a handy uh, feature. Up here I have just simple old fashioned toggle switches for living room lights. So if you come in late at night, you don't want to fumble around with that, boom, you do that. Now here's a 2023 upgrade that's mighty cool. It's the Furion tankless on-demand water heater. And that's what this is right here. So it's perpetual hot water. You don't run out of hot water. 
And not only do you not run out of hot water, it's a 60,000 BTU water heater opposed to 40 some thousand with the competition. So you're not gonna, you're gonna get the water temperature uh, that you want and you're not gonna run out of hot water with this. So really cool. So follow me outside and we'll continue the tour outside because we've got a lot of neat stuff to talk about out here too. All right, now outside, what I love about the fun side of the camper, and that's where we are right now, this is where all the fun stuff happens, the picnic table, the fire pit, the games and everything. A lot of awning coverage. So I didn't bring my tape measure. I think we're right at 18 feet of awning coverage out here. That's fantastic. So plenty of room to seat people around, again, a fire pit, card table, whatever, and have a good time out here under cover. I do have my speakers out here where I can send that music from my phone out here. You'll notice that's one of those thermistors, so that's sampling the exterior temperature out here. Talk about entertainment. Here's a TV uh, bracket so we can mount a TV here, coax cable and hook it up here. So if you have cable at your campground, and many of them provide that now, once you hook it up on the utility side, you'll have cable here power to hook up the TV. So this is Entertainment Central. I like putting a table right about here. I can have the TV up here, although the TV can mount on there, but I can put a coffee maker, a blender, have snacks or whatever right here. I got easy access to power right where I need it. Right by the door is a little toggle switch. It's, uh, well, you might be able to see it. This is a, this is a blue light under here. So why is this so great and why do they make it blue a lot of people ask me that if you're in a campground you don't want a really bright light maybe somebody's in a tent next to you you don't want to be lighting up the whole campground this is just enough light after dark to light up the underside of these steps and uh, so you can safely get in and out so that's a pretty neat feature so speaking of steps, these are now standard in all of the feathers. These are solid steps. You can see these legs down here are adjustable completely. It's a Lippert solid step assembly. When it's time to travel, you just lift this up and stow it inside and it latches right here. That's the travel position to deploy it, release this. Each one of these legs is fully adjustable and wait there's more as they say say you're at a storage unit and you've got a wall or a post here you can't drop these steps all the way down you can pull these pins out of here and lift this whole step assembly out so you can still access the coach even though maybe you've got a pole or some obstacle right here so uh, front to back we'll start right up here we've got a storage compartment pass through storage goes all the way through to the other side our magnet catches up here nice clean storage area it's lighted i have power in here and then this switch right here controls these marine grade led lights in the front so that makes it real easy to find your coach after dark when you're coming up after uh a night on the town or whatever. Now this is what Jayco uh, gives you to go in what they call the J port. This comes with a single burner griddle, which is in this box. I'm gonna show you where this goes in a minute and how that works. So coming to the back of the coach, this unit does have what you might call an outdoor kitchen. Although the definition of an outdoor kitchen is changing and evolving as time goes along. So we have a little enamel coated drawer area. I like this, there's no wood in here, there's no carpet in here. So this is easy to clean and wipe down and it's impervious to moisture. So really easy to keep clean. But here's the cool thing. I have lights in here, I've got USB for charging and I have household current. So yes, I can put a blender, coffee maker and all the a griddle, whatever I want in here. One of those plugs is keeping this refrigerator going. So I have a drink refrigerator out here, handy to have right here on the porch. My, possibly the most important thing of all is the bottle opener branded by Jayco. Love it. Now here's that uh, tankless on-demand water heater. So it's Furion brand. If I open this up, here's your tankless water heater. So again, it does have a little mixing reservoir in the back. These are easy to winterize. You're not constantly heating 
six to 10 or 12 gallons of water. It's got a tiny little reservoir. It's fueled by propane exclusively, not electric or propane. So you're not gonna run out of hot water as long as you don't run out of propane. So don't run out of propane and you'll be fine. But you can take that 10 minute shower when you've got a water heater like this. We've got windows for each one of our bunks. This one is an emergency exit, but it does open with a screen and that's a slider also with a screen on the inside. Now coming around to the back of the coach, ladder will get you up on top to the roof. Um, I don't talk about the Jayco warranty enough, so let me pause just for a second and talk about the warranty. Every Jayco has a two plus three warranty. That's an industry leading warranty. Just about everybody else is giving you one year warranty and all the gadgetry and stuff. Jayco's two years. The roofing membrane has at least a 20 year warranty. So unless you back it under a sharp limb or something, you're covered on the roof for 20 plus years. It's really fantastic. So you can get up there, clean off the roof as you need with this really stout uh, ladder. Another thing I like to do when I'm shopping RVs is do this. See how stout this ladder is. I'm 200 pounds. Do you see this thing giving? No, you don't. A lot of times you'll see these things go up and down and they're not anchored into the framing part of the coach and it's really flimsy. I, I'm always impressed with how stout the ladders are on Jayco's. Here's this magic door. So let's say at the campsite, you got a kayak or something long you need to stow. Boom, that goes all the way in there. You can pop this up and latch it up so you can put a couple bikes in there and load them from back here. You have D rings so you can secure those items so they're not sliding around. Maybe you have a dog that's getting old and has a hard time getting in out of the coach. You could put a little ramp here for the dog to get up in there. A lot of ways you can use this, but this is really handy. I'm really a fan of that feature. Very cool. If you want to add a rear camera, you can do that. It's plug and play. It's optional. We can pop one of those on for you if you want. Full size Goodyear spare. So every Jayco travel trailer is gonna have a Goodyear brand tire, tires I should say, with a six year prorated warranty. Just about everybody else is giving you a knockoff tire. Other brands are giving you a knockoff tires. The first thing you wanna do, throw those tires away and put real tires on your coach. These are good tires with a six year warranty, including this spare here underneath this cover. We have a 30 amp detachable power cord here. Um, I've got it plugged in. We're running off a generator out here in the lot. Um, speaking of power needs, we've got again, 200 watts of solar up on top. If you wanna camp out in the Neverlands off grid, no connections whatsoever, my advice is to get a small generator. We've got a 4,500 watt Cummins Onan generator. So that coupled with your solar will enable you to really enjoy this anywhere, anytime. Um, our holding tanks are labeled nicely here. Low point drain, two gray tanks. Each one of these gray tanks holds 30.5 gallons and your black tank holds 30.5. The gray are almost always gonna uh, fill up first because that shower water, that sink water, uh, any, any kind of water except toilet water. They, those fill up the fastest, but you got 30 gallons here in the black. It's easy to know which one's which because the gray ones are gray, the black ones are black, and they all terminate into this uh, fitting right here. Everybody gets kind of icky about dumping your holding tanks. I did a whole video on the top three things to do with number one and number two. <laughs> See what I did there? It's really no big deal. Put some gloves on. So easy way to keep your hoses clean, pop it up on there and you're off and pull the valves and you're off to the races. It's a pretty straightforward process, but check out RV Quick Tips with Mike if you want more details on that. So here's our outdoor shower assembly. It's hot and cold. So if you're at the beach, you got sandy feet, sandy legs, or the dog's stinky, unfurl that wand, rinse them off before they go into the coach. Really handy to have that. We use ours all the time. In fact, even at home, we always gave our dogs baths with the outdoor shower beside our RV, then they could shake to their heart's content. Here's our main water connection right here. It threads on 
and then your black tank flush right up here. Now, best practice is to have two separate hoses for these two separate functions. City water connection, you want a usually white hose rated for drinking water only. That's the only thing you ever use it for right there because you want to keep it clean. This, on the other hand, can be any old garden hose that you have. You're going to hook that up and rinse out your black tank. I suggest doing it after a trip, certainly before you're going to store it for a while. Just first make sure you open up your black valve, come up here, put your hose on and turn it on. Now, go have a beverage, roll in your awning, put away the lawn chairs, gather up the kids' toys, and just let that thing run and rinse out the inside of the black tank. It does a good job of keeping that clean. This is our refrigerator panel um, right here on the back if you ever need to access that. This is our range hood vent right here. Here's another thing to be on your checklist. It's got two little tabs here that will open this little flap and allow that air to come out. If it's super cold outside or you're traveling and you don't want that thing flapping in and out, just position those tabs in there and lock them in place. That way it can't flap. You just need to remember to open it up, otherwise your range hood's not gonna work. I always love it when there's bonus storage and there is on this model. Boom. So right here on the utility side, I have an extra compartment besides the main one up there. You're gonna use this a lot. This is a perfectly sized place to put gloves when I'm doing, I'm dumping the holding tank. Maybe I've got a spray bottle of bleach. I always carry an extra spray bottle of bleach with me because the first thing I do when I back in my RV to the site is take that bottle of bleach and go over to that spigot and spray it down with bleach. I open up the valve and let it run some water and I spray it, spray it with bleach again. I want to make sure that that's clean because I've seen what some people do with that freshwater spigot. They'll rinse off all kinds of hoses and do all say anyway. I want to make sure that's clean. So I carry a little uh, container of bleach. This would be a perfect place to, to store that. More on that on another time. Moving up to the front of the coach, this is the opposite side of our front pass through storage area. You can see that it goes through all the way through to the other side. I've got, there's not, you see there's not cables dangling down here. It's nice and clean, open storage area. I do have a light up here as well. This coach does have a battery disconnect. So right here, if you're gonna store this for a while, kick off that battery disconnect or kick it on. What's right, kick it on, kick it off. Turn it up, up and down. That way you're not having any parasitic draw on your batteries and it'll keep your batteries in good health when you're ready to use it the next time. Now, if you want to add side cameras, you can do that here. This thing pops off you can, and you can add side cameras as well as a rear camera. Those are kind of handy. We're about almost 30 feet long. So if you're traveling along, you hit your left turn signal. It's kind of nice to have a clean, clear shot down the left side of the coach and having side cameras would enable you to do that. Again, magnet catches here. They don't, Jayco's not putting those plastic things up here that always used to break real easy. Now in the front of our coach, notice we have a fiberglass front cap. And here's another thing to do when you're shopping around. Do what I'm doing right here. This is really solid, okay? So is this down here. A lot of times when you do this with other brands, you feel like you're going to put your fist through it. This is, is this insulated behind here and it's reinforced behind here. Think about it, your truck's kicking up rocks and whatever, hopefully not too many, but you wanna make sure that you're not creating da a damage point up there. You got diamond plating behind here because that's the part that's gonna get beat up the most. So up in front here, we've got two propane bottles. We've got two 30s. What happens is when one's empty, it will transfer to the other one automatically, which is real handy. You can pop these off and take them and get them filled and bring them back with having, without having to break camp and go get them filled, which is a nice handy feature. I have a battery tray in the back here. You can put two batteries, which will do for you. We'll fully prep the unit before you take delivery and those batteries will rest right back here. This is your tongue jack. It's a power tongue jack. It's also lighted. 
So if you're hooking or unhooking after dark, it's real handy to have this light. This makes leveling and unhooking and hooking up a breeze with this electric tongue jet. I also like the fact that in the event that you lose power or there was someday some issue with the motor, you can pop this grommet off and crank this up and down by hand. So it's, I always like to have a plan B and there is a plan B there. Now, before I wrap up the tour, I wanna point out the rock solid stabilizing jacks under here. These are new for 2023. I've done a video on how to deploy these, but suffice it to say that these are way more solid than the old scissors jacks that we often used to see. In fact, Jayco doesn't even like us to refer to these as jacks, they're stabilizers. These are not leveling jacks, they're just stabilizers, but they're really great. They deploy really quickly, and most importantly, they really work. And finally, one thing that you don't see on this side, the fun side of the camper, is a slide out. I love that feature because of the way Jayco's done the floor plan. They put the galley on what I call the utility side in a slide out, leaving this side wide open. They can put that nice big window and there's nothing protruding into the fun side of the campsite. All right, it's great. I love this unit. It has a lot of things that for my book make it a big value at under 30 feet, not super heavy. It won't break the bank. It checks a lot of boxes. Might be one of my new favorite floor plans in the J Feather lineup. Hey, my name is Mike. I always appreciate you joining me. I love it when you drop comments below. Be nice, please. I have sensitive, no, I'm just kidding. Drop comments below. I like to hear from you and click like and subscribe. That way you'll be the first to know when we post more videos just like this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.